Hey everyone and welcome back to my Rebel channel. I truly appreciate your patience because I know I have been gone for a minute but I'm going to tell y'all why. It's three things. My faith, I've been having issues with the sites I get my clips from, and then I know my purpose. I'm just trying to figure out my calling. First thing first, my faith. It's no secret I love the Lord God. Listen, I do. And we literally see the Bible say, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up as fit to the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. You know, that's Ephesians 4 and 29. So I had to make sure I wasn't gossiping. <laughs> it is so easy to blur the lines on reality TV and different things like that. So I had to make sure I want to do that because I never wanted to be a gossiping channel anyway. That's not my type of thing. So I had to make sure I aligned with the word of God. And after going back, looking at the clips, I'm fine. I guess that was just the conviction of making sure I'm doing his will. Will as I still express myself because, hey, reality TV, fashion, businesses, talking about different things like that. That's my thing. That's what I like. So I just have to make sure I still stay aligned with that. And when it comes to the sites, listen, it's either down. They're not posting. So I had to get my clips from other people. And when I get clips from other people, I like to shout them out or put them in the description box if I'm not able to like say their name because, hey, I may be unsure or I don't know how to pronounce it and I don't wanna sound crazy, I'll drop that in the description box. But I've also felt like I don't wanna keep having to use other people's stuff because that's how I was getting other things and making it mine because I don't like to be on the camera as much. And I wanna make sure that what you see on screen is still entertaining because who wanna hear somebody just talk and you're not seeing anything? You get what I'm saying? And then when it comes to my calling, I mean, I still don't know it yet. That's not gonna stop me from going. All I know is my calling is gonna align with that purpose. And let's not waste any more time. Real Housewives of Atlanta, we're gonna revel about it. Episode four and five was already done and I just didn't put it out because of those three main reasons right there. I just, I've been sitting on it. I'm gonna drop that literally after I finish giving this description. And then episode six, seven, eight, and nine, I'm gonna group that together and drop them each day or every other day based off of the cast members. So I may start off with Candy first, may do Marlo next, Kenya, Sonya, I don't know. I'm gonna mix it up, but I'm gonna put episode six, seven, eight, nine together so we're not here a long time. And then with episode 10, we're gonna pick back up how we were doing things before. So yeah, thank y'all. Let's get back into it. Hey everyone and welcome to my Rebel channel. I am ready to rub about Real Housewives of Atlanta season 15, episode four, The Book Stops in Birmingham. And episode five, drama for your mom. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, both of these were some fillers and it makes me wonder, was this really supposed to be a cash trip? You get what I'm saying? It could have been for a few, like a few close friends or whatever, but I don't wanna waste any more time. We're gonna go ahead and quickly go through episode four because I feel like nothing really, really went on within that episode. And then we're gonna talk about episode five. So episode four opens up with Kenya and Mayetta rehearsing. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all, Mayetta got some moves. She's gonna have Kenya out there looking right. We also know that Mayetta used to dance with Prince, Genuine, different things like that. So she has a discography. Her stuff is there. Then Kenya tells us she's also gonna be a part of the Magic City Classic. I believe that's what she said it is. I have not heard of that actually. And I've been to HBCU, so I don't know why I haven't heard that. So I'm definitely gonna look that up. But if you have not been to HBCU, make sure y'all go. Go to the events, go to the football games, watch the band. The culture is just different. But after the rehearsal, we know that Kenya's talking to her man. I didn't really need to know the information about what they've been doing, what they have been doing or whatever, but hey, we can see that she's trying to move on. They also discuss the women coming out there and how she invited them. We know that Candy and Drew, and I believe they released this information later on in the episode, but Candy and Drew is not gonna make it. Drew is gonna be sick and Candy has her own type of event. Then we have Sonya at home with her mom, her sister. They're running down all the different information of things she has to do when it comes to going to a podcast, nails done, different things like that. She's talking to her brother-in-law to make sure content stuff and different things like that it's a list of things he has to do that hasn't really been completed yet so we can definitely tell that assistant life is like not doing that well for him and with most men i feel like it really doesn't unless they like really pay attention to detail because being an assistant is a lot you know i don't have an assistant i haven't been assistant for nobody but if you watch the shows you can definitely see that it comes with a lot we also learned that sonya's husband is ready for you know everybody to move out he wants his own space back and she lets them know that, hey, I don't want to tell y'all y'all gotta go, but it's time to go. And her sister feels some type of way about it, but I, tell me if I'm wrong. I believe she had already said the mom and the sister was ready to go. So maybe it's just the time frame of them needing to be gone that's the issue. 
But we're going to see how that really plays out. Also, I did not know that Sonya was a, sp a sports analyst. I did not know that at all. I think that's actually really cool. The sister says that them living with them allowed Sonya and Ross to move very freely. And they didn't really have to worry about their son because they would have basically take care of him and watch him while they were out. She also says that Sonya isn't selfish. She's just self-centered. I guess I can see that, but I felt like she only said that because, you know, they basically said, hey, it's time for y'all to go. Then you got Marlo doing the Halloween photo shoot. Y'all know I don't get into Halloween. They're doing the photo shoot. The sister comes by. Courtney comes by. We see her images. Now, I will say some of her imagery that she has done for her photo shoots is actually kind of cool or whatever. But they start talking about, about her being afraid of everything that's been going on since the burglars broke into her home or so forth and we learned that she wants to get her record expunged so that she's able to carry and then we see her talk about courtney making that happen for her which is great and i understand her wanting to get that expunged but then she started talking about candy and i was like y'all are gonna keep beating a dead horse when it comes to this it is not candy's job to get your record expunged because you know she tried to throw in her face saying oh she's saying she's worldwide but you've never got my record expunged you've never done this marlo she has helped in other ways why do you keep doing it it's becoming annoying at this point have something else to talk about then they start to talk about what happened with her nephew and i'm gonna be honest with y'all what happened to her nephew is very sad i don't i do not wish that on anybody we can even see her sister tearing up when they mention the, his name like she starts tearing up but we see marlo say that her issue with candy is she didn't acknowledge it now the scene that production gave maybe she really didn't but she probably acknowledged it through text or something like that i believe they showed that as well but marlo's reasoning to make that an issue it doesn't fit here oh and only say that because it didn't happen at candy's restaurant and it happened years ago you know what i'm saying so i'm trying to figure out what do you really want from candy like you said you wanted her to acknowledge i believe she responded in the message and said i'm sorry to hear that and different things like that it's, it's getting a little weird honestly i don't want to talk too much on that because that is a very sensitive topic and what happened to him is very sad and nobody's going to take that from that but the levels Marlo is going to to make it an issue is just weird. Then we have Sheree. I actually like this part of Sheree's storyline. She's talking about her fibroids and different things that she has gone through. She's at her OBG. We learned that there's different options to help with that. And we can also see why Sheree is concerned. This is something I actually like to see them discuss because this is something that are very common in black women. And we also learned that there's like different options. You can have, you can do, you can shrink them. You can have surgery and then there's also natural ways to help with fibroids. Then we see Sonya. Sonya is having a family photo shoot and I believe this is here is where the sister and Emma. The sister normally does her hair. She's a hairstylist. Now all of a sudden she can't make it after their conversation. She was sick. But honestly, I agree with Sonya. I don't think she was really sick. Honestly, but the way they went about it is just wrong. The, the brother-in-law and him quitting. Like what? Like it, it was all too coincidental. And we see Sonya tear up. And I honestly, I know a lot of y'all don't like Sonya, but I felt for her in this moment because the way they're handling it is not right at all. She did say she tries to extend herself a lot by trying to help those that are near and dear to her. So I understand how that feels like it's a slap in the face for you to treat her that way. And her dad offers to step up and do more for her. But of course, she like laughs off and like, you can't even send an email. It was a very sweet gesture of her father at that time. But I get it, girl. Like, yeah, you can't do it. He can't do all that. Don't let him be your assistant. Then we see the women packing to get ready to go to Birmingham. And they meet at Sheree's house. And we learned that Candy and Drew is not going to make it. Candy has some different things going on. And Drew has the flu. And it's not just her that's sick. We seen Kenya coughing and stuff. We seen Marlo doing the same thing when they finally get on the road. So I was like, oh my goodness, I need everybody to get that under wraps. She lets the women know that it's homecoming weekend and she's going to be a part of the parade. So they think that they're just going for the game and the parade and so forth. They also learned that they're going to go to a dance class before they go to the hotel because, you know, they were there so early you can't check in until a certain time, which I think that is so weird about hotels. If you think about it, you're not even there a full 24 hours before you have to check out. So are you really getting your money's worth? And then they also learned that they're going to go to a charity event now. In this moment, I was like, this is information you give them before they get on the bus so they can make sure they have the right attire and that's going to come into play a little later. They talk a little more before they get off. They go to dance and listen. I don't think Sheree was the best dancer. <laughs> 
she ain't a bad dancer. I'm not saying that she's a bad dancer, but I don't think she was really the best. Let's be honest. If it was anybody else, she was not going to give them, let them win so they can get the best room, honestly. But after they rehearse and dance and all that, they go to eat. Then the women sit down to eat and Courtney's baby day call. And I'm like, here they go trying to make it seem like they really together. Like it really don't make sense when they say they co-parenting or whatever. But it is what it is. But we see Kenya basically say, oh, I know a Bryce. And come to find out, it's the same Bryce. And production was a little messy. They were like, have you ever dated Bryce? And she was like, he was a very handsome man back in the day. In other words, she ain't been with him or whatever. But she was kind of saying he don't look the same. But they decide to call him back. And they give him the phone like, hey, look who I'm sitting here with. And Kenya gives this awkward laugh like, hey, I wasn't trying to talk to you. Well, they're going to put this camera in my face, so let me not be rude type of thing. And I was like, what was, what was the point of calling him? You could have told him that when you got back home. Because clearly he waiting on you to get back there anyway. Then we see Sheree asking, hey, is everybody doing good? I know that Courtney and Candy are not doing good, but is everybody else in the group doing good? And Sonya basically looks at Marlo and she's like, hmm, you know. Marlo, what happened? Kenya decides to tell us what happened between Marlo and Drew and how Drew relayed the message. Now, I will say, Marlo was not standing over her like in that moment. Yes, when she got up and she, you know, I got the clip in my last video. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. But I wouldn't say that she was standing over her, talking to her the whole time. That's not how that happened. And that's basically what Marlo tries to say while she's sitting at the table. She's like, you weren't there. And then they have a little bit of a back and forth. But either way, Marlo, you still did a lot. And I still stand by what I said in my last review. And you know, Marlo's talking over Kenya. And Kenya's like, hey, I didn't talk over you, so don't talk over me. And she's like, who are you for you me, for you to sit there and say, don't talk over you? And it's like, come on, it's common courtesy. It doesn't matter who it is. Just don't talk over the person. And then she was actually being nice to you the whole trip. She wasn't even coming at you like that. So the energy here just doesn't really make sense. Then within that conversation, we see Marlo basically try to say that Kenya tries to control everything. I will say, yes, Kenya does. But in that moment, I, I wasn't getting that. You know, you, you use that statement at the wrong time, honestly. Kenya also lets the women know after that that they're going to be at a cocktail hour and everybody's excited. But we also see them say, you know, they're going to allow you to have all these plus ones. Marlo jokes that, hey, they're going to let you have five plus ones and stuff. Everybody's laughing it off. And honestly, it's very ironic because we know later on in the episode, they don't ask them all to leave. So the women get to the hotel. They start to get their self dressed because she has to be there by, I believe she said it was like 8 something p.m. She had to be there. Make sure you're on time. And of course, in typical housewife fashion. If you're not on time, you're getting left behind type of thing. You're just going to have to meet us there. So that's what Marlo and Sonya had to do. And then when Monietta came downstairs, she was like, really, Monietta? You need to change your outfit. We're going to a cocktail event. Monietta goes to change. She decides not to wait on her. And by the time they get there, production came through with the imagery. And this is why I say that. I know y'all don't care for production right now. But in this moment, Kenya was really talking up this cocktail hour. She was like, oh, yes, it's the best to impress. You step out, different things like that, just to see how everybody was dressed. And we see Sheree basically say, girl, you could have kept your booty shorts on. And honestly, she really could. She could have kept on her outfit for that type of event. It, it wasn't as she talked it up to be. So after the women leave the event, they turn in early. Well, really, Kenya turned in early and Brooklyn was in her room. The women are trying to figure out, why are we here? What is really going on? So they go to her door. They're knocking. They're trying to figure it out. And then Marlo takes it a step further by kicking and banging on the door. Kenya immediately opens it and she's yelling. Now, we later find out that Brooklyn was scared because she's trying to figure out what is really going on. And in that moment, I was like, Marlo, just chill. You don't have to do all that. They start calling each other out of their names. We see Marlo go to the other side and she's like, Kenya Summer Moore always calls people here. And then she does something else, which is actually true. I just think the way she went about it was wrong. And then she turns to Maya and she's like, you know, you're going to do whatever because that's your friend. And Maya had to tell her like, no, I can speak for myself. I can do this. And she also says she feels like Kenya left her out to dry because now I got to defend you when this is something that you should have told everybody, which is true. So as the women get on the elevator, Monietta and Marlo, I was about to combine their names, y'all. Monietta and Marlo are going back and forth. And then we literally see them step outside, not outside, but like outside of the elevator, going into another room. And then Marlo tries to slam the door on Monietta. Now, when in the confessional, we see the other women say, oh, I didn't see. I don't think she tried to do that. I don't think she tried to do that. The only person who said I thought she did was Sonya. And she definitely did. I don't care if Sheree says later on in the episode, she basically says, oh, I went and tested it out and da 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 da. 
we literally seen her slam the door in my yetta face and she had every right to be upset in that moment they're going back and forth and we see marlo basically says oh she's boring she's this she's that my yetta is like listen i'm not about to stoop to your level so then they go to their separate ways and then the other women my yetta sheree and sonya while the other two are outside you know they're in the inside and they're calling kenya and kenya this is where i was like you're doing the most and this was so wrong She's like, so like, oh, y'all didn't have to come to my door doing that, which is true. They didn't have to do that at her door. But these are your guests. You owe them an explanation on what is going on. What are they doing? This is your trip, which, like I already said, I didn't think that should have been a group trip. It should have just been like close friends or something like that. But then we see Sonya try to figure out, okay, what is going on? Why are we here? Can you explain that? Then we see Kenya basically says, I would feel better if those core group of women that are not my friend would just go home. And the way she talked to Sonya was very unwarranted. She was just trying to figure out, okay, why are we here? What's going on? You got to explain yourself to us. And can you handle that terrible? So I was here for her. Sonya basically saying, no, ma'am, I'm out. I'm going to leave. I'm not going to let you talk to me in this way. And we see Sonya bring up the Jamaica trip from last season where she's like, you expected me to be at your beck and call, but you can't explain that to me now. And that is very true. Then we see Marlo text Kenya. And she's saying, no, you're a rude. You know what? And you need help. XOXO Marlo, like hugs and kisses, Marlo. And I'm like, really, Marlo? Like, and Marlo does admit in her confessional where she's like, my. I can't even remember the name of the ladies. What is her name? I don't know. It's like her. She's not a therapist or whatever. But she's basically saying whenever she talks to her, the ladies gonna tell her, Marlo, you still got work to do. So then we see Sonya come back downstairs. She got her bag. She's ready to go. And then she's explaining why she's leaving. And then they tell her that, you know, Kenya's on the phone. Kenya literally says, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Who's speaking? She knows that Sonya's voice. Sonya's voice is very distinctive. Who else is going to be talking? Kenya, that was rude. That was very rude in that moment. And then we see Marlo basically say, oh, I get why she was trying to keep it a secret. You know, did you see the Bravo performance? That performance was wild. So I understand the confessional there. And then we see Sonya basically say, Marlo, you saying? Because if she don't want me there, I know she definitely don't want you there. Then we learn that Drew is still sick. That's why she didn't come to the trip. This whole season, if Drew isn't sick, someone else in her home is sick. I'm going to need people to take their vitamins <laughs> and get better. Because she's missing a lot of scenes so far. Then we have Candy and Todd. And we're at their space so they can discuss The Pass. Todd's new movie that's going to be coming out. And right in the, you know, at the very front of him explaining the actual movie we see candy pick up her phone he's like you know you got to be attentive and i will say candy you definitely need to be like you know if you're in a meeting for something you're not going to pick up your other phone to discuss something else while you're in a meeting so just put the phone down we also learned in this moment that candy finally had a talk with her mom but it wasn't how she thought it was going to be because her mom had called her mom basically was calling her about everything else but not to apologize for the things she said at BravoCon. we're gonna leave that BravoCon thing there because they done brought bravo con up enough and her mom could have had something positive to say so that they wouldn't have this type of drama on the show. But it is now day two on the Birmingham trip and the women are getting ready. We see Courtney talking to Drew and then we also learn that Kenya is sick. And I know that had to be hard because she was very excited to be at the event, to dance. So I know that kind of had her like, man, I didn't really get to do what I wanted to do. I will say I did like how the women came together and they prayed for. It is weird, I'm not gonna lie, seeing Marlo do that after everything that was said the night before. But the women came together whenever it really counted. But I will say, with Kenya's health scare, as sick as she was, why, why didn't nobody call for her emergency room or different things like that? Why was it her calling on her own phone when you know she's feeling like that? And I will say, hearing Magneta's story about her mom um, from that last July, I, I know that had to be very hard. Because different things, when you see it, it definitely triggers stuff. So I understand where her, emotional, her emotions were coming from. So her and Marlo decide to hash everything out after that from the night before. And I still stand on what I said not too long ago. Marlo definitely slammed that door. They can't sit there and act like it didn't happen. You could test the door. You can do that. Like people will make up things to make it align with people they favor. And listen, there's no way she definitely slammed the door. So after they talk, they decided to pack, go downstairs, and they have a conversation with each other again. So they ask each other if they heard from Kenya. We see Sheree says she talked to the assistant. They said Kenya's running a fever. She's not feeling well. 
And lo and behold, it takes Marlo. <laughs> it takes Marlo to call. And she says, you know, I tried to send flowers up there to make sure she's okay and all that. And they said she didn't checked out. Somebody lying. But if Marlo called up there and she's not there, I need to know what's really going on. And the way everybody was sitting there looking like, what? Somebody knew, somebody knew something. So then the women asked Mayetta to show them the dance that she did for Kenya. And Mayetta can dance. Everybody sat there and they admitted it. It's like she did that. And then they say, I hope we can keep the positive energy when we all leave here. And they asked Mayetta when they leave, can they all be on the same page? And I was sitting there, I was like, I don't think she's ever acted different with them when she's around other people. It's just when she's, you know, when they're in different groups and all the people together, it's like they separate and then you gotta pick a side and they be talking crazy and she's gonna say what needs to be said. And then we see Courtney basically say, hey, are you gonna be cool with my cousin? And she's telling Sheree that. And she basically had an issue with Drew basically saying that they didn't get the items back after the reunion. You know, the stuff she was given for She by Sheree. And I was trying to figure out why she really upset about that part only because it's like, where was the lie? She wasn't the only one who said that either. I believe Candy and somebody else said that too. So yeah, they actually didn't get the clothes that they received at the reunion. So I don't get why she was upset. Then when the women make it back to Atlanta, we see Drew, her husband, and their kids. The kids are practicing their names. You got Candy talking to her cousin and or her aunt. Or her I think it's one. I think that was her cousin. But she basically lets her know that she made Power 100 woman and different things like that. And her cousin basically tells her, you know, you deserve everything that God has given you. Then we see Courtney and Tanya go to some type of crystal place. At, yeah, I don't get into all that. But they were over there at the crystal spot. <laughs> and then we literally see them talk about the trip. And she's like, oh, yeah, I left all right. You know, after she told me I don't need to come back. And Sonya admit that that hurt her feeling, and I know it really did hurt her feelings. So I get how she feels in that moment, and Sonya basically feels like Kenya has an issue with her and Marlo being friends. I don't think that's what it is. But then we also see later on, Sheree goes check on Kenya. And Kenya actually is sick. She may have just left early, but she actually is sick. And Sheree gives her the energy shots and different things like that. And listen, I've had that from Whole Foods, and that actually worked. So I know that was going to help her feel 10 times better. And Kenya admit that she did not attend HBCU, so she really was looking forward to doing the Magic City Classic dance. So it really hurts her that she wasn't able to. And I think I would have loved to see that. So I definitely understand how she's feeling in that moment. Then we see Sheree says she can't defend Marlo banging on the door. And she says it's almost as if she wants your approval. She wants this and that. So I was like, so you know your friends do this and you don't ever, she doesn't tell her friends like, hey, you gotta chill. Like, you're wrong in this moment. So if you know that, why you didn't tell her that? And we see Brooklyn comes in. She's just elated. And I was like, oh, she's adorable. She gives Sheree and her mom a hug. She shows them her karate moves. I was like, okay, Brooklyn. And then they start to talk about Sheree having fibroids. And she says, you know, that's what I'm dealing with at the moment. And she asks Kenya if she had that. And she said, yeah, she had three or four surgeries for it. And that's something she's trying to avoid. So I do understand that. I know there has to be a natural way to go through that because I know not a lot of people want to go through surgery. So I understand Sheree wanting to find a natural way to go about that because I know I wouldn't want to keep having surgeries back to back to back for that. Like it has to be something they can do to help really get rid of fibroids. And then she like pauses a bit and she's like, what's going on Sheree? And she's like, you know I'm expecting. And Kenya's, oh, I know you lying, was hilarious because y'all know that girl not pretty. Yeah, no, she's not pregnant. She has her granddaughter. I know she's not trying to have another kid now. Candy Moms comes over and they decide to go ahead and have the conversation. She's like, you know, you was at BravoCon, you said all this stuff. And her mom was like, well, I didn't lie. He needs to lighten up a little bit. He was more humble in the beginning than he is now. And Candy basically sums it all up because I don't want to spend too long on this portion. Because <laughs> they've been going back and forth with this for so long. But Candy basically says, you don't even have a man. And yet you basically have something to say. Like don't have nothing bad to say about my husband because then my kids are going to see it. Do you really want the kids to see what you say about their father? Which is very true. And I still stand by. I think they should just take her off TV because she's going to be on. She's going to say what's coming to her mind. And if people keep, they're going to ask her. And when they ask her, she's going to, you know, say what's really on her mind at that moment. So I think if they just take her off TV, it will be less issues. And then the next scene, we have Sonya... Oh, I'm sorry. It's not Sonya. In the next scene, we have Kenya, Sheree, and Drew. 
they all have been sick lately so they're going to i believe it was ivs or something like that to basically hydrate them so they're sitting down they're having conversations and they get on the topic and they get on a topic of what drew said now she was like you were basically saying i took back everything she's like well i said you gave back some stuff i didn't say everything drew did say everything drew you said everything and sheree you definitely took the stuff back so i don't get why you said in the last scene that she lied semantics here you took it back and they basically talking about the she brought Sheree bag we learned that that was her personal bag so of course she's not going to want anyone to have her personal bag the people shouldn't have rolled that out there with the rest of the stuff but bottom line they still didn't get to keep the other stuff and then they talk about you know and then drew basically says well you know that was then but then i did text you to apologize afterwards so let me know if Sheree was just trying to keep it up for the cameras in this moment and then they talk about the issues between drew and marlo I've already said what I had to say on that one. But when we see Drew rehash it again and she's explaining what happened from her point. And she was like, you know, because I'm from Chicago. We don't say that word. And I'm like, Drew, yeah, yeah, this part you're going too far with. You know you probably use that word. But in that moment, the way Marlo was acting was wrong. And of course, Sheree learns that Marlo leaves a lot out when she tells her things. Because Marlo did get up and then she got in Drew's face. That's how it happened. That's why I said in the other scene for like episode four... That, you know, she didn't, wasn't automatically just in her face. You know, she was sitting down, but then she got up and then she got in her face. I'm playing some answers here. I'm trying to help her out. But bottom line, she did get in Drew's face and it was weird. And then Drew basically says, and I'm still trying to understand, you know, where was it like really coming from? She basically said, you know, Marlo told her the issue with the nephew and everything that happened. And Sheree breaks it down that he used to work for Candy and the guy that also worked there, they were roommates. And then... He's the one who did what he did to him. And we see Kenya basically says, well, that doesn't have anything to do with Candy, which is true. But that's why a lot of people are trying to figure out what's that issue. And then they discuss they're going to have a team building event. And that's episode five. I hope you enjoyed my review for episode four and five. And I will let me know down in the comment. Let me know what you thought of this episode. I will say it felt like a filler a little bit. But yeah, I didn't think it really needed to be, the trip needed to be a girl's trip. It could have just been for a few close friends. But we're going to see what else they're going to bring for this season.